Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing. Well, we're back on another tributary for a very short session, about an hour and a half. And today I'm going to be using a ledger rod with a swim feeder and liquidized bread in the feeder, piece of bread on the hook. This is a, a nine foot six watch. It's a discontinued Drenum. It was a nine foot six mini carp feeder and it is perfect for this kind of fishing. It's just powerful enough to deal with bigger fish and soft enough not to uh, crack off on smaller fish and you can definitely feel every bite through it. I think when I bought it, it was only about 50 quid. They do a um, Another version of it called a, a Red Range 9 foot mini carp feeder and that's a little bit more powerful. Still okay for this, but that's aimed more squarely at commercials. This is like more a softer version that was good for silvers. If you can get one of these, I would recommend these. You probably get one on eBay if you look around. Nice little rods for this kind of fishing. Got just enough beef to handle uh, big chub, they're rated to about five pound line, which I guess is as much as you want. Though you could probably use six and get away with it. Um, and quite light hook lengths it will take as well. If you've got the money, get yourself a Drennan ult um, Ultralight Bomb Rod. They're the best. Uh, correspondingly twice the price, over twice the price of this. Lovely rod. But for beginners, a rod like this, you can use it for any short range technique. Now I've used this on the canal though, it's not meant for that, but it will do it. Small streams, rivers, commercials, natural lakes everywhere. And provided you're not expecting to cast a, a one ounce loaded feeder of 50 or 60 yards, it will cope fine. Chuck 25 yards, 30 yards, no problem. I mean, this is the first film that I've done for easy fishing um, using a rod and reel, and there will be plenty more. Ledgering, float fishing, fishing with the slider float on deep waters, long range, there'll be all sorts. But this is the first one. It's about as simple as you can get. Don't have to worry about shotting up floats. Couldn't get my uh, bread, I was in such a rush. This is a very rushed last minute session, so I just popped into the local Nissa store and I picked up the only loaf of bread they had available, which is uh, a bit of a dry feeling. I'm gonna tear off a piece about the size of my thumbnail. And I'm just gonna pinch it round the shank of the hook, not the bend. Now I do have a few maggots and worms with me as a backup in case the bread doesn't work, but we shall see. I've just dampened my uh, liquidized bread very slightly, so it'll just hold in the feeder. And it's only a very small feeder. It's uh, the smallest Drennan grip mesh, 15 grams. Now, I'm fishing in a very confined swim. I have trees overhead, every kind of obstruction. I'm trying to get it underneath the tree. So. And I've had a bite straight away. Well, I never. <laughs> Well, at least I haven't blanked and that was the fastest bite imaginable. I thought it was me moving the rod. Beautiful little roach, tiny but lovely. 
no keep net today, there's just not enough time, enough room or anything. I've always sung the praises of bread and this is why. And another fish, feels marginally bigger, but not a lot. <laughs> oh, and this looks like a dace. And it is. Yes, it's dace. The uh, hook length from the stopper gripper bead to the hook is about two and a bit feet, I guess, not long. And if you've noticed, I've got more bait weighted today. I've really not feeling good today, so I, if, think if I hadn't had it, I would have been sick or fainted, or both. And now it's the last week in October. Um, I don't really want to be taking a header. Now, while you can use a big hook and a big piece of flake for fish, I sometimes feel that a smaller piece in conjunction with liquidized is acceptable to just about every fish. And right opposite me, there's a, a large um, beech, I think, tree. That's obviously going to have some undercut roots. It's growing right in the water's edge. So there might well be some fish hold up under there. Looks like a likely spot for a chub or a perch to hang around in. Unlikely to catch a perch on bread, though I have done it. But and that one's right amongst the tangle of the tree roots, living dangerously here. These fish are so easily spooked in these little streams. I'm going to put smaller lighter feeder on because I'm on a QD clip it's just a matter of undoing it and for those people who think I only use Dren and Tackle the QD clips actually a Preston so this time we've got a really minute feeder on Drennan three hole cage. I think this is the smallest they do. Twitch straight away and again. You miss that one. Yeah. Oh, and I've just noticed. Where did I feel that? I've just noticed a knot in the hook length. So, this is where you have a QD clip, push the rubber back, pull it out, put the uh, knot in, I don't ever want a knot in my hook, a lot of people will ignore it and just, oh it's a knot. <coughs> That'll be the time that you hook a two pound plus roach and it will be boring away and the line will go. I don't know how I got it, but it was there. QD clip. I 
I've only recently started using these um, uh, type of clip. I've used them in a bigger version in carp. And these made by a firm called Creluso. And they are described as a fine, quick snap. And it's rated to a seven kilo test. So here, yeah, I'm not gonna break it. And they are tiny. I've even been experimenting with them uh, for pole fishing. But for ledgering, they're brilliant. Uh, incidentally, my main line is five pounds. The hook length is uh, the hook length is three point eight, and I'm just for convenience using a ready tied drill and red maggot. Not what you'd normally associate with a uh, bread hook bait, but they work. Don't think the fish are put off by the red colour. Right, I'm going to recast and have a little chuck a little bit further downstream. And uh, I'm just wondering if the plop of the feeder has made these fish back off already, because it's possible. Like I said, they can be spooky. This is not a commercial venue that has people stamping around and the fish are used to it. This is a tiny little tributary. I think you'd be lucky to find any depths over four foot. There might be odd holes. But the vast majority of it is very shallow. Right. And I'm also just to make life easier, going to slide the gripper stop down, shorten this hook length off because I'm trying to get underneath the trees and amongst the snag. So we're down to about a 20 inch hook length. Right, and this time I'm going to give it a little bit longer. I'm not happy with the position of that cost. But the fish were, and that fly me. Well, the fish didn't mind it. Well, if I don't get a bite straight away, this time, I'll, let's try and get it back in the, where I wanted it to go. Now I know how to get a bite from a big fish. I've been very naughty, I bought a muffin. Yeah, told you that would get a bite. If I had the muffin in my hand, I would have had that one. Oh, it's still there. Ah, my muffin's more important. Excuse me. Oh, I have a fish and a branch. It's another dice. Oh, 
I was a bit dubious about this bread, but seems to be working, catching fish. Let's have another go. Don't think, don't think because you're using liquidized bread in the, free, in the feeder that you have to use bread on the hook, you do not. Quite often, I will mix a few casters, a few pinkies, some hemp seed, etc. in with the bread. I haven't done today, but that's still not going to stop me trying other baits on the hook. But they're obviously liking this bread. And I guess by the speed of the bites, they probably are mostly dace. And I seem to be getting the bites almost as soon as the feeders hit the water. This kind of fishing would seem alien to a lot of anglers, but to me, I grew up and learnt my basic fishing skills on small rivers like this and streams and canals. And everything that I've learnt there has put me in good stead. Because although Ah, bread was still on. Must have pinched the bread too hard. Because although this might look a, a bit strange to some people, you can fish a commercial exactly like this. Sometimes with devastating results. Sometimes the fish can go potty because it's not an approach they've seen before. And with balanced tackle, should a a big carp come along, uh, especially in commercials, they're uh, pretty snake free most of them unless you're up against lily pads. You can get most fish out on this gear. This is quite uh, Let's put it this way, if I hook a decent chub, I would be quite confident of getting it out. And I've got something here, it's not a big chub, it's another small fish. Uh, oh, there's a roach this time. Oh yes, do love catching roach. I would urge all people, I would urge all people to learn to fish different disciplines. Um, don't be just on the pole, don't be just on the waggler, the feet, whatever. Don't be a one trick pony. Learn different methods. It will pay off. People will say, oh, I don't like ledgering or I don't like float fishing. I like the method that catches the fish. And all right, they're not big, but I'm catching. Now I've raised the rod rest up so I can have the rod a little bit higher. I can. I was having difficulty seeing the uh, quiver tip against the background and I want I 
I want to introduce like a, a bow of line to reduce the uh, resistance to the fish. I mean, some people would touch ledger. I've never been a great one for touch ledgering. I can do it, but um, I prefer to put a rod in a rod wrist. You can, you know, everyone to their own, but I like doing it this way. Now this time, because I've got the rod up higher, I've got a much longer bow. And hopefully you can actually also see the bites if you watch the line where it enters the water. Straight away. Again, not big, but oh, we've got a roach this time. One thing I am noticing every single fish is well hooked in the mouth. None of this in the lip business. Instant bite. Uh, oh. None of these fish really require a landing net, though I have one with me, obviously, but I mean, they're not monsters, but who cares? In a little while before it gets too dark, I'm going to tie up a hook length with a, a bigger hook on and just present a larger piece of bait and I shall change from a uh, feeder to a link ledger. But that's, well, I hope that's the plan anyway. Now I'm just gonna have a last chuck on the feeder because the light is fading rapidly. And then I'm going to um, Just make change to a link ledger. So I'll basically unclip the feeder and just a small length of line on with a swan shot or something and a bigger piece of bread on a bigger hook. So I'm gonna tie that up while this is fishing, which probably means that I'll miss the bite that I want. Right, so we've changed over and uh, here we have a simple link just took the feeder off, clipped a short length of line on, at the moment one swan shot, a 1.7 fluorocarbon hook length to a size 10 B560, the same hook as I used for worms on the canal with the perch, but it's a fine wire even though it's a big hook and we're using a much bigger bait now probably at least twice the size of what we used before. Because I'm now having a last cast, I've got about 10 or 15 minutes, see if there's a bigger roach down there. Oh, this is probably the biggest roach of the day. Risk lifting him out, there we go. Not a monster, but yes. Well, I can still see. Great big piece of flake. Am I gonna get lucky? It looks like it's um, over now, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's not a long one, but um, 
Hope it's giving you an insight into another tactic to use on these uh, small streams. And as Arnie said, I will be back. So, um, thanks for watching. And I'll catch up with you very soon when I get a chance to shoot another video. Bye for now.